You know, one movie that I've heard from time to time referred to as a classic, and for people, they really love it or they really hate it or <laughs> one way or the other, you know, um, they, they regard this movie as being something more than I think I personally found it to be. Uh, I mean, for me, it's really not much more than just a festering turd, and that's Saturday Night Fever, um, as well as really the sequel, Staying Alive. <laughs> I have both of these movies in a two-pack DVD, and uh, I had gotten them, I think, I want to say like a year ago as of the time of this recording, maybe a little longer ago. It took me forever to finally get around to watching them, and um, I just, you know, I'm somebody who's a John Travolta fan, and <laughs> these movies did nothing for me along those lines. Uh, made me actually not like this guy. <laughs> You know, I didn't like the character he was playing. He was playing kind of an asshole, and just everybody in that first movie, Saturday Night Fever, is playing an asshole, a repulsive asshole, very selfish, very, you know, conceited, and, and all this kind of stuff, and just unlikable people, unlikable environment, and, you know, I, I'd heard about this, I mean... The sort of selling point of this film is the Bee Gees, you know, psychedelic 70s uh, sort of disco soundtrack and everything. That whole funky beat, and, you know, it's enjoyable for the most part. Um, the sort of dance floor with the lights and everything, that whole, you know, you see like a movie like Airplane basically uh, doing sort of a parody of all of that and whatever. Because it was, I guess, big for the time that it came out. I don't know. Um... But it just always rubbed me the wrong way after watching it. And, like, I, I could not for the life of me see how anyone could actually enjoy this movie. Let alone sort of put it up on a pedestal and say, oh my god, so memorable, so this, that, and the other thing. I was like, there is not one likable fucking person in this movie. There's nobody that seems even remotely redeemable. The main guy you're even looking at, you know, everyone he associates with is a fucking prick as big as he is, you know. And like, oh, so I'm supposed to feel a little sympathetic toward him because um, he has dreams of being a dancer in New York, you know. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe it's just me, but I mean, I watched those two movies and it's just like, how, how did anyone end up liking this? How does anyone, like, what about these people? What about, is it that it cuts close to home? That people, you know, we all know assholes in life. We all know selfish people. We all have our big dreams and whatever like that. And, you know, it's relatable along those lines. I don't have a fucking clue. I really don't. Because it just, it, there was no, nobody in it that was redeemable to me. There was nobody in it that was in any sense of the word attractive or that I wanted to watch, that I cared about. Um, everybody was unsympathetic and like the only sort of saving grace was some some of the music um and some of the you know filmography like i say the dance sequences and everything when he's in the club and whatever but i mean just and then you move on to staying alive which was you know i i guess six years later as per a review of it i just saw recently um and it was like you know, produced and I think directed by Sylvester Stallone, which was interesting, co-written maybe even, and um, we're following on with the same character, however many years later it's been since, you know, the first movie, however much time has elapsed, I don't know, um, frankly I don't care, and he's, you know, basically the movie's like, you know, let's take what we had with this character in the first movie, Saturday Night Fever, and in Staying Alive we're basically just gonna have, you know, the sequel sort of meshed with, like, fame, and I'm not even that big of a fan of the fame movie um i much more loved the fame tv show that was on in like the early 80s and it stretched all the way into like the early 90s or whatever it was um i liked more the middle <coughs> years of that show um particularly and uh they would always show reruns i remember actually <laughs> if i have a brief aside here on uh wgn which was like a seemingly countrywide you know, Chicago station or something along those lines. But in any case, I mean, it was music, it was dancing, it was creativity, and it was really interesting. They told really interesting stories. And here are two movies that I couldn't care less about one person in them. And even that movie, the, the fame movie itself, I watched that. And it was kind of a similar thing. Like, 
Okay, so we're following around all these young people. Of course, they all have their own sort of interests, their self-interests and whatever. And the idea of fame and, and that becoming twisted and perverted and challenging your own moral equivalence, you know, whatever you have in mind, uh, whatever bar you've set for yourself and whatever sort of, um, I guess you could say, reservations you have being put to the test every step of the way. And... I just, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but these movies, I didn't feel like there was enough time to become invested in the stories of these characters, most especially with Saturday Night Fever, where, like I say, here is a guy, you just, I, I don't find him likable, I don't find him engageable uh, in my mind, and Travolta is one of these guys, his charisma, his, his you know, prowess in actually dancing, singing, all these things, they should come to the fore. I mean, he's no Danny Zuko in this fucking movie or its sequel. And uh, it's just hard for me to watch, hard for me to get through. Eventually I want to try to give them another go, another chance. But I mean, these movies were so depressing, so sort of, you know, deflating, and just there was nobody in it. I mean... <laughs> I was even trying to be aggressively like into this movie, you know, when I was watching it and um, it just it couldn't do more to put me off if it like, you know, had a dog on screen fucking and then vomiting, you know, like, if you've ever seen that gif floating around online. Um, <laughs> short of that, I mean, that might have actually redeemed it. That's how bad <laughs> I feel about these movies. Um, so, yeah, um, <laughs> eventually I'll try to watch them again. Give them another fair shake, but at least for me, I I just I can't conceive of why they're classics, why people seem to so highly regard them. Um, uh, I guess there was just nothing else coming out at the time these movies were, huh? Oof.